Alright. Let me break down how the dark the dark light works. Dark light is like unification. So we don't take sides. You understand what I'm saying? That's the bad part about it for anybody who want to know or whatever or trying to get the philosophy or understanding. Because you know the darkness is really the most high. That's what we're talking about. It's the unification of everything, oneness, you know what I'm saying? You you see everything for what it really is, not its material side of it. You know, everything we see, it has a spiritual essence to it. This essence now, it came about from a long time ago. It wasn't always here. You know, not everybody was conscious in the sense of everything that was created or had a soul. So when things was first created that was not man or human, it didn't have soul that followed laws. Even you could say the most high, to, no, not the most high, the, this will be what's called the demigod, the um, under gods. This will be the part where for you to understand it, I would have to tell you from a biblical point of view, like how they say, um, when the Most High appointed out nations, they gave Jehovah Israel. You understand? So, you know, Jehovah is only the God of Israel. He's not like the real God of everything, like the Most High or whatever. So he's just a, like a local deity or whatever. Just like, you know, Canaan will have El, and you have the Akkadians will have Baal. Those are different deities, lower um, gods or whatever you know they're really planetary so anyways that's the difference that you have to understand really so that will make everything make sense to you so now the most high though that's really unification of everything that's where you come from where you come from as far as the the light um the light the dark light the dark light you will see it more of like um the the unified feel when it's a wave when it's a wave it's more of harmony with sound and vibration you know that's coming from sound but you're looking at hold on uh, you're looking at sound and um magnetics which is now you're looking at mind we're in the mind the great mind Who's mine? Really, everybody's mine. You you call it like the Akashic Records or, you know, the universal consciousness of everything. Everybody taps into it. Well, you know, not just does it permeate in the form of like intuitions or people getting little visions here and there. It also comes like in the form of um, people going there with visual images. These visual images is what we call the astral world or the astral plane. So a lot of people know how to meditate yes, uh, and go there on their own. So that's how you get into mysticism all that other stuff. So anyways, what happens in that field of mind is really one etheric energy, but it has the ability to separate on its own at its own will. So what wind up happening now, a lot of us, we choose to go out on a journey. So as one hermaphrodite, we separate into two, which is positive and negative, the masculine and feminine principle, which now later on becomes soulmates as it ascends down into matter. Because one, the female, she sacrifices herself as the physical to give the um, positive and life, which is the male. So they separate and she goes into her, you know, and that's where you would get our twin flames and soulmate because they go in different places. It's law that they don't see each other. But everything that is created before us follows law. And that's where everything gets a little complicated. So when finally you could say life was brought about through, you know, you see um, in our Egyptian drawings and everything, Anubis, on the potter's wheel, or you could say Set is on the potter's wheel with the man molding him out of clay. You know, it's in all ancient writings, the Sumerians got it. And so 
It's in, you know, Christian doctrine is the Adam and Eve story where they took the dirt and made man. So, you know, you could look at it like the first breath that was taken from, from um, that demigod, you could call Jehovah, whatever you want to call him, El, whatever your version, Allah, is it took life and brought life into that clay. Magic. Everything is about magic. If you're going to learn that, you will see. It's what's the invisible things that we don't comprehend or know how to do. That our ancestors do, and that's why they perform those rituals. So we'll learn that as we go along. <clears throat> so anyways, now that these people know how to, um, you know, Jehovah now, as he breathes life into this clay of Adam, he loses 50% of that um, power he had because he only had really one spirit in him. And that's the spirit that we all have, but not creatures and beasts and animals have that. They have a soul, but these souls follow laws you know what i'm saying that's like the sun that always moves in the same direction all the planets following it the whole book of enoch that's what he's trying to explain to you that those that is under those have to be followed by certain rules human beings is a higher being higher than god higher than everything because they're not governed to no rules and when the first creatures was created or beings and elementals and spirits and fairies they was only there to govern trees rocks they grow these things so their job is to sit there and just do what they're supposed to do but now as adam the first man came because you know the the, the, the story is being he was alone he wanted company he formed the image of a man. So he has some type of compassion to him. Remember, everything he created was beast, animal-like, in nature, everything. So what they was trying to do, or really his science is, of what he's saying is, he didn't like what he created in the beginning, so that's why he flooded it, but that was his nature. He, how you doing, mommy? He breathed that into life. That was what really, what you see is really what's inside of him. It's not us. We didn't make that up. Those things been there. The snake, if you want to take it there, that was going to tempt Eve, that was there. But it really wasn't in that sense. I'll explain it to you as we go along. But now, you see, what he created did not have really souls. It just followed laws. That's what this is really about. So once the Adam was made, and he gave it the job to name everything, all the creatures, as it says, because that's what he, he has in him, and that's all he can make. He realized that Adam was different from all the creatures because Adam asked for a companion. That's where it got kind of different. At. How you doing? All right? So, all right, bless. So being that he asked for a companion, it showed that he had a soul in him or part of a soul. So what wound up happening now, he was happy that Adam asked for a soul and he went and he made Eve. Or what was back then, the original story was called Lilla. That's her name, but we, we, we're gonna go into how she named herself. So anyway, so the story is he goes back and he creates this Eve at night using dirty mud and a whole bunch of filth and other stuff and using the moon, the reflective moon to make this clay um figure so the next day he does this behind adam back anyway they says it right in there that he did it behind his back the next day he showed adam his creation or whatever and this is now the story where they both adam see it and he's amazed by it it has an aura it looks good it's glowing so they ready to give it life you know what i'm saying so now what happened is this nigga um Jehovah, whatever you want to call him, when he goes to give it life, he breathed into it, but it couldn't get life. So he had to go dig deep, deep, deep within himself and give off that second essence he had, that only last bit of life he had to give as far as spirit. And he put it into that, um, the woman. And when that, it sparked it something different. She was a different type of species. Because when, when life came into her, she soon came to realization that she was pulled out of the original unification of the darkness. And it was her soul that was yearning for it. And she wanted liberation. You understand? She was not like a law that followed everything. So all of this hit her at the time of her conception. So 
now when God or whatever you want to call him, Jehovah, tell Adam to name her, she got up and spoke for herself and said, my name is Lilith. And that fucked up Adam and all of them and God and all of them. So they was like, yo, she's fucked up. We, we can't have this. She's thinking for herself. And that's when everything was set up in the Bible where they tell you that um, the woman, she's going to be always birthed with bad luck or struck him by the snake at the heel of her foot, all that craziness. But you see, that's why everything switched now to a patriarchal system because they realized the woman had intelligence, her psychic ability. So that's why they tell you about the snake came in the garden and tempted her, which the, the garden would be her body, the back or whatever. The snake being her kundalini was activated. So she had wisdom. She bit from the tree of knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what they're talking about. So when you see the woman, she's the most powerful thing. Even God is afraid of her. So what they did, they undermined her and threw her out the garden. She got out, not Adam. And you know the story goes on, but my whole point is they got the whole thing backwards. Hold on. 